Good evening. Sharon and I are looking forward to enjoying a great Christmas on tomorrow. And we most certainly do hope that you are looking forward to enjoying your Christmas as well. The coronavirus pandemic has uh, prevented us from gathering this year for our candlelight service. However, you can light a candle and remember that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. So we ask you now to sit back, relax, and enjoy the celebration. First, we're going to have a question, why? And then after that, you will have inspirational music. And after that, well, I tell you what, just sit back and enjoy the celebration. God bless you. Why? Why? Why did Jesus come to earth? Why forsake the majesty and fellowship of heaven? Exchanging a palace for a stable. Immortal comforts for a feeding trough. And robes of glory for the feeble body of an infant. An unparalleled irony, this supreme, unrivaled nobility experiencing absolute and total humility. Our sovereign God, Emmanuel, as a baby. He didn't come to heap shame upon sinners or to judge and cast out the impious, but to break bread with those called unrighteous. He didn't come to illuminate every mystery of the cosmos or to enlighten the intellectual, but to fulfill the testimony of prophets clothed in rags. He didn't come to elevate a single nation or to advocate a particular political affiliation. He came because he saw you broken in need of salvation. He saw you lost and abandoned crying out, surrounded by deaf ears, fighting through the tears, but beaten down by the torments of this world. And unable to bear your distress, he renounced his eternal throne, walked the earth, bore the stripes, accepted the nails, and gave up his last breath, so that you could receive the breath of life. Our holy, infinite God beheld your pain, perceived your heart, and determined that your soul was worth dying for. From the manger, to the cross, to the empty tomb, it is all a story of profound love, of a Savior who rescued his children from darkness of a blameless king who declared that no sacrifice was too great for the sake of his beloved creation. Why did Jesus come to earth? He came for you.
Tales. This is Christmas Eve, and Grandma would love to read you a story. Long ago, in a dusty hillside village called Nazareth, there was a young woman named Mary. Her family and her people were poor, and there was trouble throughout their land. Every day, Mary helped her mother cleaning their small clay house, making the bread and washing the clothes. When she went to the village well for water, she had a few minutes to talk with her friends. Mary's life was just like that of most young women Nazareth. She was content. But God had a plan that was going to change her life forever. God had promised to send the Messiah, a chosen leader to show his people a way to a better, happier life. For many years, the people had waited long for Messiah, and now it was time for him to come. One day, an angel appeared to Mary. All fiery, bright, and beautiful he was. Greetings, Mary, said the angel. I bring you good news. God has given you to be the mother of his son. You are to name the baby Jesus. He shall be a great man, the one who will save all people. At first, Mary was troubled. Could it be true? Had God really chosen a simple peasant girl to be the mother of his son? Then she looked at the angel, and I knew what he said was true. I will do whatever God asked of me, she says. And she was filled with joy. After that day, Mary still carried water from the well. She still mended the family clothes and made the bread for supper. And now everything seemed different to her because in her body, the Son of God was growing. She often smiled to herself as she worked. Only Joseph, the man she was going to marry, knew the reason for her smile. An angel had come to him in a dream to tell him that Mary would be the mother of God's son. When it was nearly the time for the baby to be born, a message came to all the people from the rule of the land. It said that every man must go to the village where he was born to pay a special tax. Mary went too, riding on a donkey with Joseph, walking by her side. It was long journey over steep and rocky hills. There were a few places along the way to stop and rest. Joseph and Mary were very tired when the family arrived in Bethlehem. The little village was crowded with travelers who had come to pay their taxes. All the homes and inns were full, and now Mary felt that the baby would be born very soon. Where would Joseph and Mary find shelter? At last, someone led them to a small stable. It was just a cave in the hillside, but it was a place that was warm and dry and out of the wind. And there, in that small stable, the baby Jesus was born. Joseph filled a manger with straw 
and they laid the baby in it. That night, there were shepherds in the field near Bethlehem. As they watched their flocks, a great light shone all around about them, and an angel appeared. The shepherds did not know what was happening. They fell to the ground and were very frightened. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring you wonderful news. Tonight in Bethlehem, a child is born who is the Messiah. Go tell and look for a baby lying in a manger. And the sky was suddenly filled with angels singing and praising God. Then, as suddenly as they came, the angels disappeared. The shepherds talked excitedly about the angels, what the angel had said. Had the Messiah really come at last? They gathered up their things and they hurried to Bethlehem. There they found Mary and Joseph and the baby. Jesus looked just like any new other new baby. And yet the shepherds could feel how very special he was. So they rushed to tell everyone the good news. Alone in the stable, Mary held the baby Jesus in her arms. She wondered how different her life will be as God's plans for her. And Joseph and Jesus continued to unfold. One thing she knew certainly, she was going to be a very special mother to this baby, for he was the Messiah, the Son of God, and she loved him with all her heart. tell you a Christmas story. Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring not even a mouse the stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that Saint Nicholas soon would be there the children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads and mama in her kerchief and I and my cat had just settled down for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash to open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the lister of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick I knew in a moment it must be something more rapid than eagles his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, 
now dancer, now prancer, and vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donder, and Blixen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop, the courses they flew with the sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my hand and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with the bell. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkle. His dimple, dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses. His nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow. And the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye, and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the dam of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, there he drove out of sight, happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. minutes. I keep on doing it until I finish it, all right? Um, in my 
going to and fro, I found out that God has been wonderful to me. Amen. I don't know about you. Would y'all like to hear a little bit of that? Just a little bit of that. Wonderful. Y'all want to hear it? Wonderful, my, 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 my God, he's wonderful, he is wonderful, oh, I tried him, and I know for myself that he is wonderful, yes, God is. And then I praise God's holy name for he is wonderful. And whoa, he is wonderful. Yes, God is. Sing another one, y'all get a little more steamed up. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, Reverend Cully, I've been I, I've been in places where I get pushed, and then I go and I start singing and I can't stop. Amen. Till I look at my wife and she'll say, "Sit down." <laughs> oh, there was a woman yes. in the back. Had been sick so very long, but she heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth was passing by. Then she joined a gathering throng, and while she was pushing away. What are you trying to do? She said, If I were, I could just touch him. Everything would be made all right now. The woman stood in the crowd. You could hear her cry that oh. Some fellas that don't go to church used to sing this. 
And I sneaked in and sang along with the record. You know, the technology now, you can do what you want to do. You can make, make you think that I sang with the temptations. Amen. <laughs> it's not in the old, um, it's not in the new way that you sing it. Let me get this straight. It's not uh, the way you sing it in church, all right? But it's, it, it, we, I do sing it, all right? Silent night Holy night Thank you. 
ago, in fact it was more than a couple of years ago, there was a song that was written by uh, a particular artist by the name of CeeLo Green and it was a song that was called, it asked actually a question, it said, Mary did you know? And the song went something like this, the lyrics were that Mary did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you. The last uh, frame, refrain was said, Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect lamb? This sleeping child, this child that you rocked to sleep, this child that you held in your arms in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes, Mary, did you know you were holding the great I am. Mary, did you know? And I've come here to answer the question, Mary knew. Mother Mary knew her baby. She knew her boy. She, she knew him on multiple levels because Mary knew that he was her child, but he, she also knew he was her Lord and Savior. Isn't that amazing? I'm still trying to figure out how could this, you know, women are powerful. I'm, 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 I'm men, I'm, 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 not, I'm not knocking men, but I'm, all I'm saying is that women are powerful and Mary is a representation of true womanhood. How could she reconcile in her mind and in her heart that this child who I birthed from my virgin womb is also Lord of creation. 
also the king of kings and the Lord of lords. How could she reconcile? This child that she wiped his hiney is the son of the living God. How could she reconcile? I ain't trying to ask her. I'm just putting it out there. You know, only God knows. See, God knew what he was doing when he picked Mary. He knew that she had the intestinal fortitude. She knew that she, God knew that she had what it take, the right stuff, to handle this very difficult assignment. Do you know, can we be real today? Because we know how people are and we know people are the same as they were today as they were back then. You know folks talked about Mary. Did you hear that child? Did you hear that mess? Talking about she did she wasn't touched by a man, but had a baby child. I saw her sneaking around. Do you realize the pressure yes, yes. this young woman had upon her and then had to carry it all yes, yes, yes. in her bosom? Yes, yes. She took it all in and treasured it. Mary knew. And she was able to carry this in such a way. She was a powerful woman. Mary knew. But I've come here to let you know for us today, Mary knew, but we got to know for ourselves. If the truth be told, because I got to tell you something that you, can, that you can bring to your own bosom. The fact of the matter is Mary knew, but you got to know for yourself. Your mother may have known, but you got to know for yourself. Grandma may have known, but you got to know for yourself. Daddy could know Jesus. Everybody else around you know Jesus, but unless you know him for yourself. Because your relatives know Jesus don't mean that you get a pass. You got to get to know him for yourself. Is there anybody in here that got an intimate relationship with God all by yourself? You know God for yourself. You know what he did for you. You know who he is. You believe. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart. He was raised from the dead. Are there any believers in this house that know certainly before sure without a shadow of a doubt you got blessed assurance you know Jesus is Lord. Now we will prepare ourselves for our candlelight lighting. Father, our merciful Lord, as we light these candles, Heavenly Father, we recognize that you are the light of the world. And as these candles flow from one breast to another breast, from one soul to another soul, from one person to another person, let us be reminded of the fact that your love flows that way. You came down from heaven and you loved us even when we should not have been loved. So, Heavenly Father, as we now light these candles and we're now thinking about the Christ child, thank you for all of what you've already done for us. Thank you for this moment right now. And thank you for what you will do for us. And in the coming days, as we celebrate the birth on the 25th, let us be remindful of the fact that you are the light of the world. You brought us out of darkness into the light. We thank you for that. 
Now as we sing our final verse of Silent Night, let each and every one of us in our own way, in our own mind, thank the Lord for what he has already done for us. Amen? Amen. Silent night. Oh. this light. Let the light of Jesus Christ never be extinguished in your heart. Amen. Amen. Let us extinguish the lights. Jared and I Hope that you enjoyed the celebration, and we wish you a merry, merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.